Hi everyone, this is Ray Salvadori, Director of Coaching for Manhattan Soccer Club. First off, I hope everyone is safe and healthy during these times, that everyone is taking their social distancing guidelines seriously, but at the same time also working at their game, self-training on the ball, and also training their soccer mind, tuning into these Tactical Thursdays. This week, the focus is the midfield phase. Um, the last two weeks, we worked on building from the back and getting into the attacking third of the field. Now we're going to, what's what I call the meat of the, of the sandwich here in the middle. So it's the midfield phase dealing with the central players in particular. When we play in a 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1, we usually have three midfielders that are tucked in. Usually the attacking center midfielder, which is usually the number 10, or the withholding midfielders, which is the number 6 and the number 8 that play in behind. Uh, the number 10. So again, midfield phase, the focus this week, that consolidation phase in possession. Like every week on Tactical Thursday, I love to give credit where credit is due. So again, Coach Jolly over in England, thanks for putting this video together as you see the link on the screen. Again, a great reference. Uh, we use it as a basis for the lecture because a really good organizational tool. Um, it highlights those global concepts that we talk about every week, those four phases of the field, going from the back, the build up to the midfield consolidation and incision phase where we looked to last week, we talked about incision and breaking lines and attacking uh, concepts that we teach here at MSC and leading into the finishing aspect, which is again, the most difficult thing to do. So again, Coach Jolly, really appreciate you putting this together. Um, again, we're going to talk about the midfield phase, the consolidation phase of how we can build from the back and those right moments and those trigger moments that we can play in possession through our three central midfielders that are tucked in centrally that we can get the ball uh, into the more of the attacking phase of the field. Again, that's our MSC way or our game plan that we use in our training um, sessions and also in match play as our game plan. So, uh, looking forward to uh, talking about this section. Again, midfield phase. Just for review, uh, this diagram shows those global concepts or phases of the field. I review this every single week just to kind of reinforce and everyone can visualize uh, the field and, and the concepts and, and our game plan that we try to attack each concept with. So again, going from right to left, the build up is the defensive phase uh, that we look to build in possession. The consolidation phase, as you see, it's a big part of the field. There's a lot that goes on here, so it's important for us to be successful in possession. If we can advance the ball and control that consolidation area, you're going to learn about trigger points today and certain areas that we're able to, in possession, be able to get the ball with a little bit more ease into that incision phase and finishing phase, which is, as you see, the more of the attacking uh, areas of the field. So again, this is a great tool, this diagram to help you visualize our, our concepts. Again, for review, this slide shows that MSC way or the basis for what we train in our, uh, our sessions and also uh, in match play as our game plan that every player really needs to understand in order for us to be successful. So again, the game is f played in five moments in those four phases in the in the prior uh, diagram that we saw. So again, this week we're focusing on the consolidation, which is that midfield phase in, in possession. So that's number one. Players need to know what to do in each phase when we have the ball in possession. Two, when we're out of possession, we'll progress slowly through this uh, uh, Tactical Thursdays and uh, we'll be hitting those points in each phase of the field out of possession as well and what our game plan is to attack it. Three and four, again, is those transition phases that we talk about. It's very quick moments on the field. We go from offense to defense and defense to offense. And are we prepared based on where we are in each phase on the field? And lastly, it's set pieces, both sides of the ball, offense and defense. When we win a set piece, when we have to defend a set piece, are we prepared in each phase of the field to deal with those situations? So again, this is our MSC way. And these are those five moments where the game is played in. Back to the focus this week of Tactical Thursday, and we're talking about midfield play in possession in that consolidation phase, uh, trying to build from the back through this phase 
this middle phase using our three central midfielders in the style of play that we that we want to play in, which is um, either a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 in our organization on the field. Uh, some of the key goals and, and aspects are, are highlighted here in, in this slide. Um, and this is built into our training program, into our, our game plan uh, of things that we want to achieve on the field that we need to train towards in order to get. And uh, we need every player on the same page in order to, to make this happen. So this is part of that MSC way. So the first aspect is we want to build from the back into the midfield consolidation phase uh, successfully using our three center midfielders, which is a number 10, a number six, and a number eight, which is usually our attacking and two withholding central midfielders. And trying to get them in more of a rotational type of movement. Those three players can all dip into the consolidation phase, into the back third, and try to receive the ball from the backs. Uh, we, we use the phrase bouncing the ball uh, through these players. Uh, they can either change the point of attack and play our outside backs, or ideally they can turn and face in that consolidation phase and play forward so we can get into that attacking phase and look to go to goal. Uh, the second overall is to keep possession. If we're constantly turning the ball over uh, in the back third or the consolidation phase, uh, these are high risk areas and we could give up a goal that way or uh, create scoring opportunities for the other team by turning the ball over. So we have to be very safe and, and uh, make low risk decisions and uh, we have to understand where the opposition's pressure is coming from. So ideally, we want to play the ball forward, but if we can't, we have to play laterally and backwards. So these are the type of um, decisions or the type of um, outlook that our center midfielders need to have in order to be successful in these areas. And we train that and we make sure that those central midfielders have those type of experiences and, and, and type of visuals when they're in training so they can bring it to the match. The third is we always look to try to play forward. So if these three central players are able to receive the ball from the back end, uh, building through the back, which is what we covered in, in, in week one of Tactical Thursday, and they're able to turn and face, we call that a trigger point. And then we're able to attack from there. They can distribute or they can drive on the dribble and get into the incision phase and get into the attacking phase with possession so we can start creating scoring opportunities and hopefully with some good execution score goals. And the last is a, is a big change of point of attack, which means you hear, you hear coaches say that, change the field, change the field. That happens all the time. So if it's done uh, in the consolidation phase, in the midfield phase, uh, with some good accuracy and also with some precision, um, a good change in the field, and you'll watch EPL games and you'll see a good change in the field will, will open up the game and the player receiving the ball has a lot more time and space to enter that midfield phase into the attacking phase. So we encourage our, our central players to do that as well. So these four points, again, are part of our training program when it comes to our central midfielders and also um, how we want to play in, in this phase of the field. So um, on to the next slide. In this slide, we start the beginning of, of the visuals of our of our midfield play in possession in the consolidation phase. And as you see here, we start from the back or the buildup end, and you see the dotted lines that connect the defenders and, and the goalkeeper. That's the shape of our defenders. So our two outside backs, the number two and the number three, are further upfield, already in the consolidation phase. Our Two center backs are split at the 18-yard box with our goalkeeper looking to um, support the play in behind. As you see, the arrows go up and down for the goalkeeper, the number one looking to support. The ideal um, play is for one of our defenders, whether it's the outside backs or our center backs who are split, to what we call bounce the ball or play the ball into one of our three central players. Here, it's the number 10, the number 8, and the number 4. Okay, so as you see, the ball's been bounced in here to the number four. We're able to possess the ball at the beginning of that consolidation phase and look to play forward from there. So we try to circulate the ball through our backs and keep possession to keep the other team off balance. Um, you'll see that the dotted lines also are not only our shape, but areas that we can pass the ball as well. But the idea is to try to bounce the ball into a number 10, a number four, or a number eight in order to build up our our, and start our possession in the consolidation phase and, and going forward. So again, moving on to the next slide, it'll start here by one of our outside backs or one of our center backs playing the ball into the number four. 
This next slide shows the continued progression from building from the back and getting possession through our midfielders in the consolidation phase of the midfield phase. So you see now uh, the progression, the, the number four or one of the central midfielders has received the ball from one of our backs and is able to turn and face the goal that he's looking to uh, attack to the left side of the field. So if the number four is able to receive the ball in this area and able to turn and face with no opposition, you see the options that he has to play and he's got several options to play forward. And this is when there's no opposition playing against the number four to prevent him from making these type of distributions as you see with the arrows. So this is what you call the first trigger point, the ability to play forward by one of the central players, either the 10 or the eight or the number four, having the ball bounce through them from our defenders and in their shape, the number two, the number five, the number six, and the number three, and able to play forward. So if you, if you are able to play forward as a number four here, then we encourage our players to do that, to get through our consolidation phase or midfield phase with possession and now into our attacking phase, our incision phase, um, and hopefully with some good um, breaking of lines, we can, we can score some goals with some good execution. So this is a good example, that first trigger point, play forward when you can. Now this is an interesting scenario. This slide shows the inability to play forward by the number four because the opposition in black uh, with the letter P is applying pressure on a number four. So as you see, the ball right now is at number six, which is one of our defenders in shape and possession. And we're trying to build out of the back uh, and we're trying to bounce the ball through our central player, but we can't do it there with a number four, okay? That player is covered. That's a high risk play. Number six is not gonna really try to play the ball there. So we encourage the number six at this point to play either wide to number three, laterally to number five, or to the number two. But where does this leave our midfield play? How can we solve the situation here between the number 10, the number eight, and the number four? If the closest player that we're trying to build from our back end in the build-up section and get into the consolidation phase number four has opposition applied to him, but the black player number, uh, sorry, letter P, uh, that's putting opposition to him. So what's the solution? What can number 10, number eight, and number four do here to open things up and try to bounce a ball through a central player? Well, to solve the problem, if opposition is applied to one of the central players, which is the number four in the prior slide, is rotational movement. And that's how the three central players, the 10, the eight, and the four here, can solve the problem of opposition and freeing up one of those players to be able to receive the ball in the consolidation phase and try, try to play forward. So here's the type of movement that you would see. So if the four there is, number, is covered, then he can move to the 10, the eight, and those type of slots in a triangle type of situation to get that type of movement, keep the other team off balance, and free up some options in their center midfield for us between those three players in order to receive a ball from our backs, bounce the ball into them so they can turn and face and play forward. So here's the end result after the rotational movement between our three midfielders, the number four, the number 10, and the number eight in that triangular fashion. This is not easy. It takes a lot of training. It takes a lot of coordination. Um, I would say our, our teams, when we start getting to the older ages and those more advanced ages, 15 through 19, really start to pick this up. But even still, it takes a long time. But as you see, the end result here, where the number four was, now the number 10 is through that rotational moment. The number 10 is able to receive the ball from the backs and bounce through him. And now he has these options to play forward in the consolidation phase in order for us to get forward. So... Number 10 is now receiving the ball. So that's at trigger point two, which is after rotational movement. So the four originally had pressure and now has moved out of the space. And now the number 10 has come into that space, hoping to receive the ball without pressure and play forward. If there's pressure on number 10, he'll look to play backwards or laterally, which is what we try to train our central players to make those decisions. And then maybe the number eight can slide into that. So if you can visualize the triangle between the four, eight, and 10, you'll see how that rotational movement can create opportunities for our central midfielders to receive the ball and play forward.
or the last concept we try to teach our midfielders is to change the ball quickly. So a number four, a number 10, as you see, who are in the consolidation phase, um, if they receive a ball from the back line, they can play a ball directly into the forward's feed, which is a number seven. Uh, if they do it effectively, it keeps the other team off balance and gives number seven a lot of space to go from the consolidation phase and into the um, attacking phase of the field, either the incision or the finishing phase. You can switch the ball to a number two and a number three, uh, our outside backs as well. Here would be a number two, um, and we can enter the attacking phase of the field and get through the consolidation phase with possession through our outside backs as well. So a good change of point of attack or change the field that you hear a lot of coaches scream out can be very, very effective from our number 10, four, and number eight when playing through the midfield. I always want to remind players to understand your tactics. It's so important to you being a successful player. It's so important for uh, teams to succeed as well when every single player understands their roles and responsibilities, uh, irrespective of their position um, in each phase of the field. So continue to be a student of the game. Remember my key phrase when it comes to our tactical goals, and I'll repeat it at the end of every week. Individual and team match tactical success occurs when, and you'll see in red, players are able to technically execute proper skill and tactical knowledge slash awareness on and off the ball in every moment, which are those five moments that we spoke about earlier in the lecture that we kind of reinforce every single week of the game in each phase of the field, those four global concepts, those four phases going from the back to the attacking third. Remember this week, the focus was on the midfield play Regardless of position, as I always mention, your position changes as you move in each phase of the field and your roles and responsibility changes. So again, I use the example of the right back who's in the back third and build up off and on the ball and then advances up field and that same right back is in the middle third and they have to think about what they need to do on and off the ball. And then that same right back moves into the attacking third and has to think about scoring goals and breaking lines and setting, setting up players to score goals. So become an attack-minded player. So regardless of position, everybody needs to know what their roles and responsibilities are in those five moments, which is that MSC way that we talk about, as you see, that game and training plan, what we train players and what we try to achieve during matches that we try to reassess and give that type of feedback to players so they're successful and it's reinforced in each phase of the field. And again, those four phases of the field, just to re recap, are the universal concepts of the game. It's taught everywhere. Those from the buildup, consolidation, incision, and the attacking third of the field going from the back to the front. So I always stress the players as well, you know, watch the game. Watch as many games as possible. The focus this week was midfield phase in possession. When you watch your next EPL game, do you see teams that are building from the back and successfully trying to connect with their central players? That number 10 or the number six or the number eight in the, in the withholding positions. Is there rotational movement between those players? Meaning if there's pressure on one, do they move out and create some space for another player to receive the ball? Are they able to establish themselves, right? Those central players, those central midfielders in that consolidation phase, that middle area, so they can turn and face and play forward and look to advance the ball with possession. Are you seeing those trigger moments that we talk about, right? The first one being, are they able to turn and face those central midfielders and at attack the goal and look at the goal that they're trying to score on and can they distribute out from there in possession? Or are those central players, do they have pressure on their back, right? and they have to play the ball backwards or laterally in order to play possession, in order to get into that midfield phase. Maybe then if they play laterally to an outside back, that's the entry point where we can look to go from the midfield phase into the attacking phase from an outside back, which happens a lot. Watch it, see it. Also, when you're watching a game, do you see that changing the point of the attack or switching the field? I know when you watch an EPL game, that happens in every phase of the field between the backs, between the midfielders, between the attacking players. Look for that change. And if it's done quickly and it's done effectively, that person receiving the ball is gonna have so much time. I always say when you change the field, you're passing on time. And if you do it quickly and efficiently, 
They're passing on so much time to that receiving player across the field that they have time to play. It's very hard for defenders to get over laterally when changing the field is done right. So definitely look for those aspects um, when you're watching games. The more and more you see those visuals, the more and more you'll be able to recognize them and the more and more they get imprinted in your head. So when you're playing, you have that visual, you already see it in your head and you'll be able to execute um, in each phase of the field, especially through midfield play, which is what we're focusing on this week. Thanks everyone for reviewing today's lecture. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me at ray.salvadori at manhattansc.org as you see on the screen. Keep working at your game. Keep working on self-training. Train your soccer brain. Become a student of the game. I'll see you next week.